Most of the time it's minus Ratu set, minus Hecate, and then we pick Heart Left, we pick Equilibrium, then we ban two more maps, and those two bans. Those are kind of hard to predict. But yeah, that's most of the time the way it's gonna go. Mm. Game one Heart Left. <laughs> Game two, Equilibrium. Game three, maybe that's where it gets a bit interesting. Could be El Cyane, could be Oceanborn if it didn't get vetoed, but I don't really know. I can ask Rainer actually. Uh, what's your second veto? And what's Clem second veto? Just asking. The first two maps we can kind of predict, after that it's a tiny bit harder to predict. Uh, Rainer decided to veto Side Delta second, and Clem vetoed Golden Aura. So yeah, the leftover maps are Oceanborn, Elsiony, Solaris, and then of course Equilibrium is going to be the second map. And uh, <laughs> Rainer just said Side Delta might be worse than Oceanborn. So he has vetoed Oceanborn in the past. Now he's decided to veto Side Delta. Let me show you guys, not a secret. <laughs> He says he has 0% on side Delta against Clem. That is Maru's favorite map. We are almost good to go, but apparently Clem forgot to pick Terran. Maybe that's on purpose. Maybe he wants to make uh, some Protoss magic happen. But I don't think that's going to be the case. It's been a fun weekly, guys. We started off the year 6 at 6, as we always do. It is now 5 minutes past 10. We played a couple other games before. My stream crashed right before the weekly started. That was very weird. I think it was a Twitch issue, another ruddy issue. But hey, at least the rest of the night, everything has been perfect. Hopefully you guys had some fun. I had fun. Let's hope we have a banger of a grand finals. Clément versus Raynor. It's not the first time that these two play against each other in the grand finals. Let's have some fun. I've got a coffee. Good old 10 p.m. coffee. We may as well. And don't forget, guys, exclamation mark, big gape. This Saturday, if you guys are near Cologne in Germany, or even in the Netherlands, which is kind of close to Cologne, you want to hang out, play some StarCraft maybe, exclamation mark, Big Gabe. Big Gabe is running a big tournament in the Experian in Cologne this Saturday. I'm going to be there, Hero Marine is going to be there, I think Skillers and Kalazur will be there, Jumi is going to be there, and I'm sure a whole bunch of other good nerds show up. I heard that there's a good chance that even this kid will be there. It's going to be awesome. Let's get it on. Round one, fight. Top left side of Heartlet. We are looking at the main base of the Rekordmeister of the European Pro Tour Weekly. And obviously the reigning defending champ after winning in the Grand Finals last week. This is the one and the only... Liquid Clam. Bottom right side of Heartlet. We are looking at the main base of the man who is in better spirits and in better shape than he was last week. Last week he was feeling a tiny bit under the weather. This week he's feeling sharp, feisty, on point. He's played good. Is it good enough to win this edition of the weekly? Representing Basilisk, it's Raynor. And hard lad, guys. Buckle up and enjoy the ride. Most of the time they have pretty freaking epic games on this map. And there is very often a Terran base. And we take in the center. Most of the time it's climb at the bottom. We have a lot of epic battles over this center base. Planetary, Widow Mines, Tanks, Sensor Towers. And Zergs will still just send it, because that's the only option they really have. Sometimes they get it, sometimes they don't. You get it, you're happy. You don't get it, you're very sad. But of course, there's a lot of things that lead up to those moments. And we'll see if we have a normal start to this series or not. You will vote in 4 minutes and 39 seconds. Yeah, we went for a 15 minute prediction. 1.7 million points on Clem. Jeez Louise, that's a shit ton of points, guys. So yeah, also, in anybody who's asking right now, in 2 minutes that prediction will still be open. If you guys don't see a prediction, sometimes you have to press F5. You have a, if you don't see a prediction, press F5, then it will show up. That is the same with your sub notifications. If you sub and it doesn't appear, I haven't seen it, so I cannot thank you either. Don't get angry at me. It's a very weird thing to get angry over. I'm doing my best, guys. 
And if I have thanked everyone who has supported me for the last 12 years on this channel, I won't suddenly stop doing it. There's a good chance that either I missed it, or I was busy, or you didn't do it correctly. Mm -hmm. Reaper fast expand into a third command center. As we're gonna build a couple of Hellions. Oh, unlucky for Reyna, guys. The Reaper body blocks the drone, body blocks it twice. First blocks it from building a hatchery, then blocks it. And if he can do this again, he can maybe get there in time. Oh, what a disaster, what a disaster for Reyna. Liquid Clum doing Liquid Clum things. Liquid Clum. <laughs> this is actually an incredibly big deal, guys. Now, Reyna's third base is already delayed by like half a minute, and it's minus two drones. And minus two drones this early into the game is a, is a big loss. It's not something that we can really... Overemphasize. Clemens is going to YOLO the first two Hellions in the Reaper right now. Reyna does block with the Evolution Chamber. One Hellion is very low on HP, but even a Reaper and a single Hellion will still pack a punch. A nightmare start to this best of five Grand Finals for Reyna. He is doing a good job here in limiting the damage. This is nice, but it's still a lot of lost mining time. I mean, he dealt with these Reapers, or the Reaper and the two Hellions very well. But Clem is on fire here. Incredibly good start for Clem and a very rough start for Reyna. And once more for the 5 or even 2% of the people out there that don't know how this works. You can only build a hatchery with a drone if there is nothing blocking it. So when Clem sends his Reaper right next to the drone, that drone cannot actually become a hatch. So that's when Reyna tried to run the drone to the extractor. So at least the drone could live and you can morph it into an extractor. But Clem body blocked that too with the Reaper, put it right next to it. So the drone was stuck and it died. And then obviously here the same thing happened. Clem off to a fantastic start. Rainer in a bit of trouble. Mm. How to predict? Well, not every single country can predict with channel points. Everyone should be able to at least vote for number one or number two. Uh, but not every channel can predict with channel points. If you live in the Netherlands, you cannot wager your imaginary internet points. Liberator is going to siege up behind the third base. Get a single drone so far. We're gonna move the lip. Clem is the best in the business, I think, when it comes to moving lips, keeping them around. Still being annoying with Hellions as well, which... If I'm Raynor, I'd be absolutely fuming, guys. Uh, I might lose the queen here, no? I think he's gonna lose at least one queen. Might even lose the fight again, and now you're in danger of losing another drone. At least the Liberator is going to take a shot or two from the spore. And this lip may... No, yes. Does finally get picked off by these queens. The Clem is going to be already happy with what that Liberator did. Because if we take a look at the income advantage graph, we can see that Clem has been mining quite a bit more than the Rainer over the last 2-3 minutes. And honestly, if Rainer was Buddy streaming... Whoa, Mayday, let's go. Mm -hmm. Vamos! <laughs> I was like, what do I hear? <laughs> Appreciate the relentless passion for SC2. I hope you stick around for many more years. Thank you so much, bitch, for the 30 bucks. That's fucking awesome. I really appreciate it. Thank you. That is the plan. Obviously, I'm excited for some of these other upcoming RTSs as well, guys. But for now, all focus is still on StarCraft. And I'll try to keep doing it for a long time. What I want to say before we got that awesome message is that if Raynor was streaming and he lost those two drones, he would actually tell you that it's GG. And now, of course, in the Grand Finals, and he knows that a bunch of people are casting, a bunch of people are watching, he's not just going to do give up. He's going to try to make something of this game, but he is uh, not going to be happy, and he will probably think in his mind that this is going to be a very frustrating game. And there is a world where he can still turn this into something, but he's going to need Clem to mess up. The problem with that game plan is that Clem doesn't really mess up very often. Rainer has a big Zorkling run by, and Clem does not actually have any units here, so that is some nice damage. Link count, I think, is high enough to win the fight against the uh, Zorklings, or excuse me, against the Marines. Clem is still here, though, with a bunch of Hellbats. Can these slow Banelings connect? They sort of can. It's good damage what Rainer found here with just the Links. Does not make this army disappear on the other side of the map, but the Marines are a bit low on HP. Combat Shield wasn't quite ready yet. A strong moment by Rainer, great run by. Buys him some time. Just needs a few moves like that while not taking any damage on his side of the map to really be back in this game and be like, you know what? I like where this is going. Mm. 
Thank you to uh, Darkosh for the prime as well. I appreciate it, matey. Here are the Marines of Flam one more time. He's gonna gun down that first screen that I think had a decent amount of energy by the looks of it. Rainer is enjoying a 17 worker lead and does have a lot of creep through the center of this map. <laughs> Dark <Darkosh. laughs> That's funny, man. Scan goes down, a couple of these crypto ones are gonna get picked off. One of the Wither Mines has already fired, the other one has not fired yet. Does get a great shot off on the Bane Links mostly. So not too many links going down, but a decent amount of Bane's falling. Mm. Well, the creep is amazing. Especially through the center of the map. I like what Clem has done with his Hellions. Morphed all of them into Hellbats after he realized that the Bane Link count was too high to really get value out of them. Just use them to get control of his own Naga Watchtower. I've always had it, Leslie. I always have it, mate. Been a thing for like 10 years. <laughs> the scan here would be awesome for Clem, by the way, because there's a bunch of active 3 2 more. Some of these mainly connections were not all that bad. This is the grand final. It's the best of five. Only the best of five in this tournament is the grand final. The Widow Mines have potential. That one, good split, though, by Raynor. Didn't really connect with a whole lot. It was like two Zerglings. That one got a few more, but not too many. Good reaction by Rainer again. 94 drones for the Italian Stallion as he has dropped an infestation pit and he feels that it's time to go high. Glam feels that it's time to go for his first serious drop of this game. Four Metavex. Not completely full of units, but obviously a decent amount of Marines with plus two now. Rainer, you're going to need a little more than just a couple of Zerglings here, my friend. Uh oh, 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 this drop is going to be problematic. Clem is obviously still in the center of the map as well. Widow Mine shots have not really gone off yet. But that's not bad news for Clem. Clem has now killed the spawning pool. Finally, a couple of Banelings of Rainer do connect with that army in the main. Will these Banelings connect to? Yes, they do. Wow. I'm almost shocked, guys, because those were incredibly big Baneling connections. Twice, first in the main, and then here on creep. And I know it's on creep, but normally Clem is still an absolute master in avoiding that from happening all the time. I mean, I can always uh, skip alerts. It's not that big of a deal. It's not that many that they really are a problem. Mm. Thank you, MMF and then Clem still dropping in the back of the natural, but I want to show you guys this fight in the center first. Clem has an overwhelming amount of units. Rainer is doing whatever the hell he can. He's going to be very Hydra heavy. Don't forget, Rainer lost his spawning pool, and you need a spawning pool to build Zerglings. The man has not been able to build Zerglings for a while. The last few banelings he had still find decent connections. I feel like Clem must have a massive army at home or something. No, this just doesn't look like a 108 army supply. A couple of reinforcements are about to arrive, but I still expect more. Where is it? Well, he's building a lot, just kind of rallying everything into his natural. Clem is obviously doing great. Rainer has rebuilt his spawning pool. Still has six queens. There are so many mines here, though. It's going to be difficult to run through this. Let's kind of activate all of them. Forcing Clem to unburrow these mines. And he's gonna push Clem back for now, but there are more Widow Mines in the mix. Some of those shots are decent. Clem is not looking for decent. Clem is looking for game ending shots to get Rainer out of this game one here on Heartlet. Rainer is obviously not happy with the position that he's in. He's still a Lair Tech Zerg, guys. Keep that in mind. It's Lair Tech Zerg. We're not gonna have Adreno Glands anytime soon. Ooh, nice. Oh my goodness. Back to back friendly fire, eh? Who cares about Larentech Zerk? If the Widowmines start killing the Terran army. That was a good Widowmine shot though. Eight drones just died. We have a mine that somehow ended up in the third base. Rainer now realizes that maybe this is the moment to fire up that hive, drop a lurk, and then I think it's going to be incredibly hard for him to survive if Clem just grabs everything he has and after A moves to the other side of the map. Rainer's been on the ropes for quite some time, and this is not a rope a dope. No, this is on the ropes because he has no other move. He has nowhere else to go. He's being cornered in this ring. The ring belongs to Francis Le Clément. And all that Rainer can do is hope that Clem eventually runs out of steam or makes a mistake or two. And Clem has made one or two beauty errors, but they have not been big enough to really give Rainer any momentum. 22 Banelings, 24 Hydras, and 44 Zerglings are out for uh, Rainer. Rainer needs, I think, a few more units over here on the right side. The Banelings do connect with all the Marauders. It's not a 
exactly what you're making Bailings for. And these leftover Marines with plus three attack, plus three armor. I'm gonna get on top of this hatchery. Rainer is sending everything he has to keep this hatch alive. And he will actually be able to keep it alive for now, but he also ran through a bunch of mines. And there are more mines. Everywhere we look, there are mines. Clem now has another army in the center of the map. He is just all over Rainer. Rainer is on wobbly legs. He's trying to survive and he's trying to hang in there. He's doing a very good job in hanging in there, but he kind of feels that. Claymore is a storm that will and shall not be stopped here on Heartland. We've got eight lurkers on the way with seismic spines being researched. I think a medevac just died here and disappeared from our minimap. Nice tiny surround there on a couple of the marines. And we can definitely say that Rainer is showing us resilience. He's not just giving up, he's not rolling over and dying and taking one bad fight. Saying that he is fighting an uphill battle would be an understatement. Yes, truly is an unfair fight. Maybe the YOLO lurker counterattack, guys. One time and one time only. A couple of ghosts dying right now. These are ghosts that Clem is absolutely going to need. Are these lurkers already? Oh, yes, they are. Do we have any liberators? No, we don't. So, maybe, guys. 81 drone broke as a joke, Rainer. Is there a world where eight lurkers can turn this game around? There definitely is. I'll never forget that game in the Europe Regionals on Solaris, where it also felt that Clem was winning for a while. It was against Cerro. Then a bunch of lurkers got on top of the third base, and the game just ended. I don't think I was casting. I think it was Wadi and Zombie Grub, but I was pretty confused, too. And some people on Twitch were very angry. You were like, you saw it coming! I was like, well, and you guys saw it more than me. I didn't. <laughs> I don't see it coming this time either, but it's 17 lurkers now. I mean, 17 lurkers is pretty fucking mental. And if Clem would just have a couple of liberators, I would obviously not believe, because Reyna does not have the economy to make vipers and play that slow game with the abducts. If 17 lurkers can just get themselves in the positions that they are looking for, there might be a chance. I still don't really believe Clem's ghost count is now at 13. Like, that's a serious amount of ghosts. Well, of course, Clem can't make any errors. Yeah, he's not even gathering a tiny bit of a bank. The ghost trying to get some snipes off. Still 14 ghosts. Clem not making any mistakes. Just when I say that, he does end up losing one. Raider's got Lings and Lurkers now on the top right side. He's got Lurkers in range of this planetary. He's got Lurkers denying the third. He's got Lurkers on top of the planetary in the center. It's actually becoming a little bit scary for Clem. I still believe in the ghost. I still believe in snipe, snipe, snipe. But these are ghosts that Clem cannot afford to lose. And Clem does actually lose a couple of these. This is a bit risky by Rainer. Like, yeah, you're going to get a couple of great shots off. But now you're going to lose all of these lurkers. I kind of feel like you lose a bit of your momentum. But now you make it easier for Clem to just focus on this side. 15 ghosts. Lurk is definitely making this game very annoying. Clem trying to land some snipe. Whoa, Clem! That was a very big misclick. Oh my, oh my. What the fuck just happened? I guess he had no energy. I think Clem thought he had energy, but he didn't have energy. That was a big loss. That was a very big loss. Jeez Louise. Now Clem has energy, but yeah, his bio is kind of beat up already, so he can't really stim forward anymore. Rainer is now on top of the planetary in the center of the map as well. Has Zerglings running into the natural, Banelings blowing up the SUVs and the planetary. At this point, I'm starting to believe that it is happening. There are still 14 goals, and as long as there are 14 goals, we cannot count Clem out. But this has been way more successful than I ever thought it would be. Finally, guys, Clem is going to be able to clean up all these lurkers, but it costed him two and a half base. And now he's in danger of losing another base in the center of the map. He's down to 135 army supply. There was one more lurker denying this base in the top right. Seven lurkers for the Rainer against all these ghosts. If he gets the ghost, it could be good enough. And this game is actually on a knife's edge at this point. Rainer did manage to retake this base. Has obviously thrown a lot of resources at Clem. And Clem's ghost count is getting ridiculously high. But Rainer's got a 50 army supply supply lead right now. Man. Four lurkers remaining. Clem is going to throw down the scan. He's going to get on top of these. These are the only four lurkers. Widow mine drops is excellent because there's no sport crawler here. Turning into quite the first game between these two. Absolutely fantastic video gamers. 
And where it felt that Clem had Raynor on the ropes for the longest time. It definitely is Raynor who's got Clem on the ropes right now. And Clem just wants to slow this game down, but Raynor is having none of that. Raynor does not want to slow this game down. HWKI, stop the balance winding, mate. This, oh my goodness, what a fungal! What a fungal! A bit of mine dealing some friendly fire as well. Ghost Marines dying, and I actually think Raynor has successfully done it. It felt like Mission Impossible. It felt like it was an unfair fight. Clem was all over Raynor. Clem had more bases, had a better economy, better upgrades. But it's the Lurker YOLO attack, similar to that Solaris game where. Oh, that one ended very quickly. This one took a little while. The Lurkers truly have turned this around. There were no Liberators on the side of Clem. Clem had a derpy move here where I think he just ran out of scans. I think he thought he had a scan. He didn't have a scan. And he took a crazy amount of damage from those Lurkers. Another well, Link on this very high. There aren't too many Marines anymore. Can the Bane Links connect with the Ghost? With a mine shot is very good. I just think there was no scan. Clem throwing down a scan in the bottom left side, wondering if Rainer has that base as well. I think if he saw it there and it was fully saturated, he would have just left. And now he's like, ah, oh, maybe Rainer isn't all that rich. And that's definitely the case. Rainer really isn't all that rich. But neither is Clem. What does Clem have right now? Main base right up. Natural pretty much right up. This base, not too many mineral patches left. But this center base is omega important. And at the moment, it is just getting denied. Still has resources to build a few more goals. Has lost 17 goals. Rainer losing 33 Lurkers. Not 34, 35, but he's gonna be happy with what those Lurkers have accomplished. The spikes have been going up. There are Lurkers right now flanking this army. Rainer with Lurkers on the left. Roaches, no, no Roaches. Just circling, paintings, and a hero drone coming in from the right. More Lurkers, the Lurkers sandwich is going to end up with a W here for Rainer, guys. What a bizarre game. 20 minutes of video gaming on Heartlet. And the man who lost in the grand finals last week, 3-1, to one, takes the 1-0 lead after a nightmare start where he lost his first two drones to the Reaper. Then was in all sorts of trouble where Clem was all over him, even lost his spawning pool, was only able to build Hydras for a little while, fired up a hive when he was pretty broke, Realized that Hydras and Banes were not going to win that game. Needed something special. Dropped the Lurker then. Went for the Lurker counterattack. And the rest, as the kids would say, is history. Damn. That is a pretty insane comeback by uh, Raynor. Clem will look at that game and probably feel like it was a bit of a troll. Obviously went for an Orbital as well on the top right side. Uh, there were a few Bane connections that were a bit bigger than they were supposed to. There were a few derpy moments with the ghost where Clem probably thought he had energy, but he did not have energy. I can't help but feel that was an undeserved win. It was a surprising win. It was a win that I don't think even Rainer really saw coming. I'm not going to ask him now, but we could obviously ask him after the series if he ends up winning the grand finals. Mm. We have an admin that's going to slow down this lobby to make sure that all the things are correct. I think Clem just didn't end it. Clem obviously normally adds in Liberators. He didn't add in any Liberators. We have uh, fake people sneaking into the lobby. That's why the admin is making sure that they cannot say naughty things in the lobby that would show up for all of you guys. Yeah. Call it the Showtime base. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't use the word undeserved. I also wouldn't call it a throw. It's just more that... Uh, I think Rainer really showed a lot of resilience. Hanging there like an absolute champ made it incredibly difficult for Clem to end it. Clem at one point maybe got a bit careless and reckless, right? We saw Banelings connect in the main. We saw Banelings connect in the center. A Clem that is like 100% dialed in, focused, on point. You just don't see that. He's always going to pick up and he will make sure that... He's paying attention to the right units where Banelings come close. And I do think we could have transitioned into Lips. Because if you have a couple Liberators, you make your life so much easier. Because Raina didn't have the economy to go Hydras, Lurkers, and Vipers to abduct Lips or make Corruptors to get on top of Lips. All that Raina really had money for was pure Lurkers. And Lurkers are good against ground units. Yeah. 
kind of work. This I think a very well played game by Rainer. Instead of always moaning about like what I don't understand. I know that people love to complain about balance. But these two have been pretty back and forth lately, guys. We had a couple of Clem wins, we had a couple of Rainer wins. Why does it always have to come down to balance? Why can't it just be some days Clem plays better, some days Rainer plays better? And it's almost like it's a competition and it comes down to who brings it more. You know, Clem won last week 3-1. Why would Rainer now suddenly win because of imbalance? Nothing changed since last week. Before that, Rainer won 3-0. But before that, Clem won 3-1. Before that, Clem won 3-2, 3-2, 1-1, 2-0, 3-1, 2-1, 3-0 -1, -1, for Rainer. Like, it's pretty back and forth. It just really comes down to who's more on point and who plays better. Neither of them is balance winding, like they'll joke about it. But Rainer never really looks at it and is like, oh, I lose it to Clem because the game is imbalanced. And Clem never says, I lose to Rainer because the game is imbalanced. Round two, fight! Mm. So. Primo Bikes and Plastilink. You guys got timed out. Not by me. If it was me. Burma. They go back and forth. Some days Clem wins, some days Rainer wins. It's almost like they're both amazing and they both have games where they truly bring their A game. And some games where they let go or they get a bit careless and they get reckless and they get sloppy. Because they are playing against an amazing video game and that's trying to force out as many mistakes as possible. And it's just a competition, guys. It really comes down to who plays better. Round two, fight! In the top right side, we are looking at the main base of the man who is the reigning defending champ. Last week he won 3 to 1. Should have won game 1. But he let go, could not close it out, and in the end died to Lurkus. Can we turn things around on a very difficult Terran map? Equilibrium. This is the one and only. Liquid Clam. <laughs> top left side, we are looking at the main base of the man who probably can't quite believe either that he managed to win that game 1, but he did! And this goes to show that it's not always GG if we lose our first two rounds. Hang in there like a champ and turn things around with the Lurkers. This is Basilisk, a Rainer. Why are Liberators better than tanks there? Because we can already spam lips with a reactor. I think we don't have too many factories with tech labs, but we will have like one or two starports with the reactors. And Liberators are just amazing against uh, everything that Rainer has there. Well, the tanks can be a bit vulnerable, right? If, like, Lynx run on top of it or Lurkus run on top of it, but... Lurkus can attack tanks. Lurkus cannot attack lips. I think with a few Liberators, Clem's life would have been a lot easier there. I don't care how frustrated some nerds are with the state of the game. I don't want to hear the opinion of people that watch two games of StarCraft in two months and then think that there is big problems and they need to spread negativity. Like, I just don't give a shit. Especially not when it's between two players that beat each other all the time. Some days Rainer wins, some days Clem wins. I really don't need to hear about the dude who's at 7-Eleven ordering the big gulp and eating some fucking Doritos about how imbalanced lurkers are. Like, just no. You, want, you guys want to discuss certain things, feel free to join in any of my regular streams where I don't have a two minute delay and we are not covering a tournament. You want to discuss certain things, I'm willing to discuss it. When we are watching the grand finals of a weekly and I have a two minute delay so I can't possibly really interact with you guys in that way. And we are looking at two of the best gamers on the planet that go back and forth beating each other. It's not gonna happen. Nice little move there by Klima. Shooting at his own Reaper with the heli and the splash damage killing the, cre the creep tumor. Klima has played some fantastic games on Equilibrium in the past. Equilibrium is definitely a heavy Zerg favorite map. That doesn't mean that it's easy because there are still a at best handful of Zergs on this planet that are going to defeat Klem on Equilibrium. So yes, this is a very good Zerg map, but unless you are anywhere near as good as Klem, you're still never ever ever going to beat him. Clem has defeated Rainer a few times on this map. He did it in the WTL Code S playoffs as well. That was a painful one for me. He also beat Zero on this map. That was a mega painful game. That I never want to think about it again. That one should not have happened. But it is what it is. 
Uh, FC Pam Pam, I actually got this hoodie from our man Gemini, mate. Um, good friend Gemini, American Protoss player living in Korea. I think I just said on stream that I thought these hoodies were awesome. And he said, if you want some, Roddy, I'll ship them to you. So I got two of them, the dark one and the teal one. And I'm very happy with them. They're very cozy. Now, it's almost summer, so I can't really rock them all that often anymore. But as long as it's not quite summer yet, I'll be wearing them. Mm. Clemmy is Hellions, the Evo Chamber block did not go down guys, so these Hellions just YOLO in and look at Clay Morgo kills <laughs> I want to say 9, 10, 12, make it 14 drones and then we still have the Banshees that are active in the main base as well. So just when you think that it's hard to find a lot of damage on Equilibrium where it's hard to find any success as a Terran on this Zerg favorite map, like that is a fact, that's not an opinion, everybody would tell you it's a Zerg favorite map. Clem comes out of the gates, guns blazing, kills 16 drones. And that's gonna make it a whole lot more playable. Now, Reynard does have his hands on the Mega Base. And if you guys wonder why do we call it the Mega Base, gold minerals, and a rich Vespian geyser. First time in the 14 years of StarCraft 2 history we have a game, or we have a base rather, where there are gold minerals and a rich gas at the same time. The reason why we never did it is probably because some races benefit more of that than others. Turns out that Terran is kind of screwed on this map. Protoss is also very good on this map against Terran. Clem is still uh, winning almost every TVP though. But I digress. It is here. I do kind of like this map, even if it's maybe not the most balanced for high level play. It's fun to have something a bit different on the ladder and it's also fun for us people that play but are not necessarily world class to do some funny silly builds that wouldn't work on other try hard maps but you can get away with here on equilibrium so i like it i also understand that some of the pros do not like it do we have an armory guys yes we do have an armory so where are those two two upgrades claim off reina likes playing middle link bane on this uh, map the problem with middle link bane guys is they have very late upgrades and Clem has very quick upgrades. Clem has also killed a shit ton of drones in the early game. Splitting up his army now. Reynard really needs to make sure that he does not take a bad fight. One bad fight and it really is going to be all over. Hmm. Scan. Clem needs to scan here. Clem really needs to scan. He's going to battle the queens instead. Reynard I think is busy dealing with the double drop over there. But he's also transfusing. But the queens don't win this fight. These are 1-1 one, one marines. Widowmine tried to fire at the Overseer, that would have been a disaster. But Clem wouldn't be Clem if he doesn't unburrow, so he kills every single queen. Now the Mudos and Lynx are going to show up over here. There are still Widowmines in the mix. Clem is going to pick up these units. Widowmines. Good shot. Oh my goodness, no! Reino, Reino, Reino! <laughs> oh, 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 guys. Be good, Clem. Oh. Be good, Clem. <laughs> Hey, Clem still had these units as well, just like that. It is all tied up, all that whining, all that moaning, guys. Clem still had all of these units still unloaded that, dropped into the main. Nine minutes, complete domination coming out of the Frenchman. And we're all tied up, and Clem is going to request two minutes. I think he just wants to enjoy all of his great moves one more time there of Equilibrium. And you know what, Clem? I get it, mate. If I would look like that on Equilibrium, kill 16 drones... Then gun down every single queen, have a minefield that all the Mudas just perfectly fly through and a couple of links take the first big mine shot to the face. Yeah. I would take two minutes as well. So he takes two minutes, I'll take two minutes. And after that, we'll be back with game three. A surprising start to this grand finals. The complete opposite of what happened last week. Because if you guys go over the results of the grand finals of last week, I'm sure that it was Clem winning on Heartlet and then losing Equilibrium. So this happened last week. Clem took the one on lead on the good Terran map. Raynor tied things up on the good Zerg map. Today, Raynor wins on Heartlet. Clem wins on Equilibrium. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and take a very tiny break. After that, I'll be back at Game 3. See you guys real soon. I mean... According to some, you could, Mr. Uh, 
Gecko Zero. It's like, yeah, Lurkers looked amazing in game one, but Clem didn't have the right units. Now Widowmines and Hellions look game two. Amazing. Does it mean those are in balance? Well, according to many, the Widowmine is a problem. According to some, it's not. It is what it is. Let's go ahead and enjoy game three together. Oceanborn, we're all tied up. One apiece. Hmm. Fight. Damn it. I had my uh, sound muted. But it's round three. You guys get it. Top left side of Oceanborn, we are looking at the main base of the Frenchman. This map has been vetoed many times in the past when Zorx played against him. Now he gets to enjoy it. Let's see if he will. This is Team Liquid's Clam. Looking for victory number 65, whatever it is. Take a little look at that. Bottom right side, we are looking at the main base of the man who's trying to get his second weekly victory in three weeks, representing Basilisk. It's Rainer. Take a look at the all-time stats very quick. Didn't do that yet before the finals. Where's that beautiful page? Here it is. Europe overview. Yeah, Clem is looking for victory number 65. If Rainer wins today, it would be his 18th victory. Clem 64. Gabe still sitting at 57. Max Pack sitting at 40. Rainer fourth in the all time standings. Rainer will obviously be kicking himself a little bit there. A miraculous game one victory to then lose on the best Zerg map that he is going to be playing in the grand finals like that. That's got to sting a little. Let's see if our Italian stallion can keep it together and turn things around. Thank you to uh, Inspi1, by the way, for the eight months. And my man, Brett, earlier for the 51. I appreciate it, guys. Much love. Hope you're doing good, Brett. Hope life is awesome in Australia. You love this game? That makes me happy, Riker. I could take a few more comments like that. It's still a pretty good game, guys. For all these years, Clem draws first blood. First blood. Uh, Raider's not going to be happy with that, guys. Losing a Ling or two, that's acceptable against the Clam Reaper, but we don't want to be losing drones. There's also an SV that's going to block Raider from trying to take this base. It's only three minutes, and I don't want to be too dramatic, but I don't like this start for Raider. Fully saturated gas at this point, but link speed is going to be late. Clem fires up a cyclone. First time we see the cyclones today. Could just be two cyclones. Well, maybe he's going to make a whole lot more if he feels that Rainer is going to build a lot of roaches. And Rainer has dropped the roach one. Big Gabe is a very big fan of just going like mass cyclone heli in with that crazy high SCV count. We know that Gabe has been doing that for a while. I kind of feel like it started off as a meme for Gabe where he was just having some fun with it, but then it turned out that it's actually pretty good. And Gabe even brought it to the Intel Extreme Masters in Katowice, took out Solar with it. Crazy game on Golden Aura, if you guys watched that. I don't know if that was on the mainstream or not, but I really enjoyed that game. And this is the 100th final. Okay, I didn't make that conclusion. I didn't pay attention to second places, but... 100 finals in 216 editions. It's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty fucking good. It is just going to be two Hellions into uh, two Cyclones into two Hellions, though. I think this is the build that Rainer complained about a while ago that he actually thought was very good. McLean will uh, show up very quickly with 60 Marines with Stim, two Metavacs. And then you have to worry about Reapers, Hellions. One of the Queens already getting picked off. The second Queen is going to take a lot of damage. Rainer really is in trouble here, guys. It is five minutes into Oceanborn, but multiple queens have died. The Ravager is going to die. What on earth is happening over here? Everything that Clem is touching is turning into gold. Two queens, a Ravager, a Roach, and a Drone have died. Another Ravager falls. The Overlord falls. The Cyclones are low in HP, but it's still so hard to actually kill them if you don't have Zerglings with speed. Clem is looking for two more lock-ons because he's crazy and he's greedy and he wants another queen and he gets another queen. Because Liquid Clum gets whatever the hell he wants. Yeah, that is a god tier start for Clum. Three minutes in. I thought I was being a little dramatic when I said I already liked it for Clum. I don't think there is anybody you now watching this game that would not agree with that statement. That is Omega Painful, guys, for uh, Rainer, who does have 51 drones, but pff, 
I've seen so many queens, this is gonna slow you down, you lose those ravages that are so freaking expensive. What do you do? Let me even save these cyclones, he's brought them home, he's gonna repair them. Four Hellions gonna show up on the edge of creep, they're gonna grab an active creep tumor, they're now gonna go for a couple of drones, that does not quite work out, but three Hellions, still enough to one-shot workers, it's no longer three Hellions, it's only two. The two Hellions can obviously still kill drones as well, and that is exactly what's going to happen. Painful. I mean, this could have been worse. Losing three drones for four Hellions. Obviously, that part is not that bad. Feels that Rainer now has some aggressive intentions with Roaches and Ravages. Maybe hoping that Clem has not built any tanks. But Clem does have a tank. A second tank is on the way. I don't really believe in this. Do you guys believe in it? Is there anybody who believes in this? Where can I find the biggest Roach lover out there? Pi, reveal yourself. Uh, like, if roaches have an upgrade advantage over bio and tanks, like, sometimes you can make cool stuff happen, but it, it's a numbers game. And roaches and ravages kind of need to show up in overwhelming numbers. This is not overwhelming numbers. This is a decent amount of roaches and ravages, but not enough to yellow it into the third. This is like, what? Okay, it's only the second overlord that Rain has lost. Kind of felt to me that he lost a few more. Sim is done, but Clem doesn't really want to take this fight yet because he doesn't quite have combat shield. And why would you if you're Clem? You know you're off to a great start. You know you've got three bases, a bunker, defensive tanks. There's no need to fight with your marines here in the middle of nowhere. Mm. No, he does not have the cyclone upgrade. He only made two cyclones. There's definitely no hurricane thrusters in this game. This is a build that Clem has done quite a few times in the past. It's just two Cyclones into Hellions. It's also what he started with when we just started playing on this patch. That is the start that Clem often used. Sometimes he went four Cyclones and then Hellions and would then still play Bio. Hmm. Clem can throw down a scan here and push the creep back a little bit. Raynor is on top of this army at least with his Roaches and Ravagers. Zirkling speed is now on the way and Rainer is still firing up an Omega quick hive. <laughs> if you take into consideration how bad this start was, I'm pretty stunned that 8 minutes into the game this hive is now 60% done. But that's not gonna make Clem's firepower disappear. And Clem is about to have a good time multitasking with maybe 3 medevacs in the natural and 2 medevacs at the bottom side of the map. Obviously at home he's pretty bulletproof, he's got the cyclones, he's got the tanks. This is where it's very difficult to play with Roaches and Ravages, because how do you properly split up your army? Reyna did land a couple of fantastic fungals, so that is good. Taking damage uh, in the bottom side of the map is less good. I guess we'll take that on the Reyna's side. Lost five drones, not ideal, but hey, could have been worse. At least he landed a nice fungal. Killed all the marines, apparently. They were a part of that move out. Hive is done, Lurker then has been dropped. We're going to fire up those Lurker upgrades. ASAP? Where is that arm? We have an armory. Where are the two to upgrades then, Clem? I feel like Clem has had 1-1 one, one for a little while at this point. Now he pulls the beyond. Never pull the beyond. He doesn't. Now he pulls the Clem. <laughs> that final queen kill when both Cyclones had... What was it? 12, 14 HP. To actually send those Cyclones back in rage, get the double lock on and get the kill on the Queen. That really is Flame Moss stuff. Clem is going to unload these three medevacs full of Marines in the bottom side of the map. And he's going to get a very easy cancel on this hatch. Rainer finds himself in a somewhat similar but obviously different scenario than he found himself in on Heartlet. Uh, has got into Hive a lot quicker. Has got Lurkers a lot quicker. But Clem has obviously learned from that game, and Clem is not going to be as stubborn as he was in Heartlet. Still multitasking, unloading these three medevacs full of bio in the main base of Rainer. We are dead even in upgrades here, but Rainer needs a few more units. In the end, Clem is happy with just sniping the extractor and a couple of drones. That overseer is flying around, running for the hills. <laughs> and the overseer will live. It's four ghosts at a time in a 10 minute game. I wouldn't hate a Nidus, and I'm sure that we are going to see a Nidus. 
But I'm sure that Clem is also already thinking about the potential of Nidus Networks. And that's why he's building the sensor tower here and all the missile turrets. That's going to make it almost impossible for an overseer to fly deep into the main and drop a Nidus. Top side is always going to be revealed because of the sensor tower. Even if Rainer is dreaming about it, it's going to be incredibly hard to pull it off. Does land a few more nice fungos and shocking investors are everywhere. 11 minutes in, Rainer is just trying to give himself a bit of a bank, a bit of wiggle room. And to potentially make some plays. Getting a Nidus behind enemy lines is going to be incredibly difficult. And I'm sure Rainer knows that, but it's always nice to have the option available. You can always drop a change link too and hope that the change link can <laughs> make its way into the natural war main. Reyna drops the bathing nest as well. 2600 minerals in the bank, 500 gas. Obviously not a bad moment to start thinking about adding in a couple banelings too. 10 tanks, 9 ghosts. We're going to get a fusion core and a second star port. Rainer is going to try to drop his first Nidus, but yeah, we already mentioned all these missile turrets. If I'm thinking about it, you can bet your bottom dollar that Clem is also thinking about it. And Clem already has an answer for what we are even thinking about. Gonna stim a couple of times and that is good enough to get a kill on this hatch. And if you guys wonder why does Rainer not cancel it, it's because he's paying attention to this army. But this army is also going to get the kill on the lurker then. It feels like it's a bit of a one-sided affair. And Clem is kind of dominating this game. But we felt the same thing on Heartlet. And Reyna did win that game. So we'd be an absolute fool to count our boy out. So far in all three games, players just kind of got off to an amazing start. Now game one had a very surprising outcome. Game two did not. Will game three have one? Clem is going to stim forward again. Does not actually click on the hatch. Reyna left a couple of lurkers behind. So he's going to embrace the late game. That's pretty much all he can do. Spines are going to move to make his life a little bit easier. These marines will still find like four or five drones very quickly. Missed one or two final shots there. Could have made it. Five gets four though. He's going to be happy with that. Plan building command centers for days. Four at a time. Advanced ballistics on the way. I think we have two star ports with reactors, right? Maybe... Yep. This has actually been a very big change. For the longest time, Advanced Ballistics was an upgrade that was in the tech lab if you connected to a star port. And at one point, because Terrans were struggling a little and life was hard for the poor Terrans out there, we moved uh, Advanced Ballistics to the Fusion Core. And at first, people didn't think it was very... Hey, the changelings, by the way. That's the only thing that I did mention. And I thought maybe they could sneak into the main. And they have snuck into the main. So there is a Nidus that's going to come online right now. Clem sees it. It's still going to be hard, though. Do we have any Liberators yet? No, we don't. Ah, this is a shit ton of Lorcas. This could be the Great Equalizer. Ghosts are going to... Oh, they... there's no Overseer. That is a problem as well. If there is no Overseer, the Ghosts can just cloak. And they can stand on top of all these uh, Lorcas. Snipe, 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 snipe. Fungo, Rainer, lands, and maybe nice Fungo. Doesn't quite connect, unfortunately. He gets a couple of Marines and one or two girls. In the end, Clem is bulletproof for now. 15 minutes into Oceanborn. Rainer tried. That looked scary for a split second. But yeah, the downside of doing it with changelings only is that you don't have detection. Mm -hmm. The girls will have personal cloaking. Makes life hard for the lurkers. Mango Mosh, I've got a bone to pick with you. Been waiting for you to show up, mate. I am ready to give you a call on Discord. Any of these upcoming days where we have no delay, we're gonna discuss something, mate. And you better be done. Because if you wanna be a big boy and make edgy tweets, you're gonna have to justify yourself. I don't care if it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but we're gonna do it. Mango Mosh. I'm on to you. So you know. Reyna is going to drop a hatchery over here in the bottom left side and top right. Clem doesn't really seem to be in a hurry. And then Clem is very happy with the army that he is uh, heading towards. Slowly but steady, we can maybe get rid of a couple of tanks. I think 24 ghosts 
kind of enough ghosts, guys. <laughs> Sometimes people ask how many ghosts is too many. I don't know. Some Zergs will tell you there is no such thing as too many ghosts. I think with 24 ghosts, we will basically accomplish what we are looking for. Some of these sounds of the ghosts kind of reminds me of my Nintendo 64 days. But I don't know if I'm thinking of GoldenEye or if I'm thinking of my PlayStation 2 days with uh, time splitters. Maybe it sounds a little bit like a gun in GoldenEye. But I have no idea which gun anymore. Trainer has lost 7.1k resources more than Clem in this one. Clem has orbitals for days, so you can scan everywhere, and it's very unlikely that one of these sharking infestors is gonna land in the dream fungal. Oceanborn is a map that Rainer used to veto, as Clem is gonna start getting rid of some of his own SCVs. But today, Rainer decided to do things a bit different. He said he had enough of Sight Delta. He decided to veto Sight Delta and play an Oceanborn. 17 minutes in, I think he may be regretting this. <laughs> the good news for Reyna though is that now it kind of just becomes a normal late game, right? It's a very difficult late game. Clem is pretty much unbreakable. Mm. But at least we have a late game where Reyna's got upgrades, Reyna's got a nice army too, and Reyna's got money in the bank. These are not my favorite games, by the way. It's not really necessarily a balance complaint or a map complaint. It's just, I feel like we have seen plenty of fantastic games across all matchups, whether it's Mirror or it's Steven Z or ZVP, where you just have these non-stop battles. Those are the ones that I love. When we are looking at these absolutely monstrous banks and sensor towers and static defenses everywhere, and it even reaches the point where we kill our own units because there's so little happening. This is not my favorite kind of StarCraft. It's okay if it happens once in a while. I feel like it's not okay if it happens too often. No. Raynor is going to reveal one of his infestors here. The scan. I'm surprised, by the way, that it... Uh, didn't Clem see that? There's a missile turret that's going to come up here online. I actually think it is going to reveal this infestor. You guys think it's the PP7 in gold and silence? I think you guys are right. I think that's what I'm thinking of. That's what it somewhat sounds like. <laughs> I wish that I could stream GoldenEye one day. That would be fantastic. Play GoldenEye with my fellow casters. Finally in game in which I can beat Demu. That'd be fun. Nice Fungal by Reyna as he gets a couple of the goals, but the ghost count is so freaking crazy high that fungling four or five goals is really not going to make much of a difference. What Rainer will be able to do is take out this planet. There it is. Army is kind of stuck right now, though. How are we going to get his army out? Clem dodges the fungal like he's Ronaldo in his prime. Or should we say Kylian Mbappé? Mbappé might go to Madrid. Here's the time. Nice uh, parasitic bomb here, by the way. It's going to do some nice splash damage. And the end, Rainer still is going to end up losing that entire army, or at least most of it. Some of the units made it back. Rainer is going to transfer drones. I don't know where. All the rocks are still online in typical Rainer fashion. Rainer does not like killing rocks. A lip and a tank shooting at some spore crawlers. Oh. Oh. Silence PTP from Goldeneye. I I'm gonna Google it after this game. Let's see if that's the one that I'm thinking of. You know what I think was a very underrated game? It's Time Splitters 2. Or just regular Time Splitters, I don't know. On the PlayStation 2. That was such a fucking fun game. It was so high paced. It was so fast. I fucking loved that game. I played it so many hours with my friends. And I thought I was very good at it too. But I also thought I was very good at Smash Brothers. Until I ever played people that are good in Smash Brothers. And I realized Smash Brothers is not fun at all. <laughs> it was way more fun when I just played with kids that I went to elementary school with. <laughs> That's when I was good. I was smurfing in my local neighborhood, guys. I'm sick. 
Couple of nukes landing over here. Rainer looks at an absolutely terrifying army. And is probably wondering, what do I do? He has gone back into a very heavy link composition. Of course, the beauty of Zerg is that you can remax very quickly. Rainer is currently sitting at actually only 23 larvae. That's not that much. Looking for an abductor too. Finds an abduct, but actually loses the viper. Doesn't even kill the lip. Uh, we do land a tiny fungo on a couple of these uh, Vikings now. The Vikings are this strong. Because Clem has very good air upgrades. Better than Raynor. I mean, this feels a bit brutal, no? Kind of feels like we have been watching Clem bullying Raynor for 17 minutes at this point. And Raynor is looking for the safe word. Eunice lost Reese's step earlier. It was already 7,000 in favor of Claymore. At this point, it is 12,000 resources in favor of Clem. And Raynor is slowly but steady losing one base at a time. He has now fired up eight Broodlords. What are we looking for with those Broods, guys? Couple sick fungos on the ghosts, and then the Broodlords with Broodlings will punish it. I don't really know. Obviously, because Clem had such a fantastic start in this game, it's kind of just been Clem's game, and Clem was able to get away with whatever the hell he wanted. He could spam as many goals as early as possible. He could take every single base on his own pace, and even if Rainer for a split second took this center base, Clem wasn't really worried about it, because Clem knew that he had the army that could immediately deny that base whenever really truly belonging to Rainer. Looking for fungos, land a nice fungo on a solid six Vikings or so. Most of these Vikings do not die. The ghosts are on the high ground. They are safe, protected by lips, protected by widow mines. Death by a thousand paper cuts or a thousand PP7s. Pew, 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 pew. Landing an EMP on the drones and one infested. That one ghost is still gonna try to land it. it's a nuke. We have barrel bombs going down. Ghost is sniping left, right, right. Is this the fight that Rainer was looking for? There aren't too many medevacs here, guys. The Bainix need to go for the ghost, but I think every single overseer has been sniped. Rainer just had enough of this game. He doesn't really have any money in the bank anymore. Clem was omega rich. And without really having an absolute game deciding fight. It is this kind of Clem who snipes his way to victory, takes a 2-1 lead. Cannot ignore the fact that Clem had an absolutely fantastic start in this game. Sniping a drone, killing those Ravagers, killing those Queens, keeping the Cyclones alive. At that point it really was kind of Clem's game. And all that Rainer could really do is try to defend, try to stabilize, turn it into something. And At one point he was a high tech Zerg. He did have all the beautiful upgrades and... The hive tech uh, production facilities to build some of those powerful units. Just that Clem was mega rich, had 20 plus goals, had sensor towers, missile turrets everywhere, uh, proper Fort Knox at home. So then all you can really do is fight that army, but being forced to fight that army straight up when Clem is always ready, can scan for days because he has so many orbitals, because he had such a great start, just makes it very difficult. Let's take a look. We get ready for game four. Game four will be played on Solaris, guys. Golden I P P seven sound. Let's take a look. What a great, what a great game, by the way. I love this game. I think it uh, sounds slightly different when the shots are connecting. 
The snipe is pretty close to the CSGO USB. I am a proper plap in CSGO, mate, so I know very little. All right, Raynor hits us with the Hibira back. I need three minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and take a tiny break as well. This has been a pretty long finals, and if I play some ads, we'll make sure that there are no ads that run in the middle of the game. I'll see you guys soon for game four. Let's hope we get some nice action and back and forth training, because that's why I love this matchup. All right, the Earths are ready. If they are ready, I am ready. Score is two to one in favor of Klima. Solaris often gives us absolute bangers between these two. Let's hope we're in for another one. Last game. Clem was up to a fantastic start. And then it turned into a tiny bit of a snooze fest, if you ask me. But Clem obviously did what he had to do. Clem just wants to win. Don't forget that Clem lost in the grand finals against Reina not too long ago. So he wants to make sure that it doesn't happen again. This is his tournament, his stomping ground. He is the recordmeister. In his 100th final, he is looking for victory number 65. Round four. Fight. Pretty damn good track record. Top right side of Solaris. We are looking at the main base of the guy that everyone is talking about for all the right reasons. Was invincible in December. Slowed a little down after that one. Well, the beginning of January, he was invincible too in the WTL code S. Katowice wasn't quite it for him. But he's showing us that he's still one of the very best players on this planet. Liquid Clem. Malam. Liquid clam. Bottom left side, we are looking at the main base of the Italian stallion representing Basilisk. This is Rainer. Rainer will know that he's going to need much better starts. Had a miraculous victory in game one on Hartlet. And all of you guys were complaining about the lurker. And I haven't really seen any lurkers. Well, I guess we saw a couple lurkers on Oceanborn, but they didn't have much of an impact because Clem was more than ready for it. Rainer's going to have to clean up the starts, and he knows that. There is very little separating these two. If Rainer brings his A game and Clem brings his A game, we have fucking fireworks and they're fighting everywhere. If one of them is just a little sharper in the first few minutes, most of the time they're just gonna close it up because that is how damn good they, they are. I think it's also difficult, especially on a map like Oceanborn, to make like the magical comeback as a Zerg. Clem was covering all the, path, the paths that Rainer had to victory. We had missile turrets, we had sensor towers, Nida's networks were basically impossible. We had one, but yeah, then we have no overseer, so we can't really see the ghost. And Lurkas can still deal some splash damage, but then you're never gonna get the perfect shots up. Rainer needs better starts, and hopefully he's off to one here. I wouldn't hate a game five. We had a fun weekly. It is 10 minutes past 11, but that coffee gave me some wings, so let's hope we get a game five. That would be played on El Sione, by the way. The map that. A lot of Terrans will tell you it's 50-50. Some of the Zergs say they're slightly Terran favorite. I can see something for 50-50. I wanted to uh, link my uh, YouTube video of Masters Colosseum, by the way, but now I completely forgot. Damn it! I had a Hungarian YouTube uh, editor, guys, make a video of all the highlights of Masters Colosseum, which was a big tournament we had throughout the entire month of December. He cut it up in cool little pieces where every single player has his highlight segment with a couple of the important moments of their games. But the entire video is very long, so you don't have to watch all of it. But I think if you are a fan of any of the 16 guys that played in Masters Coliseum, it's pretty fun to take a look at. I hope you guys are willing to do that. I'll see if I can find that link after this game. Hopefully right before game 5. And also I want to mention that I will not be here next Monday, guys. We do not really miss any Mondays ever, but next Monday I will not be here. I'll be in Los Angeles for work. I can discuss what kind of work. So next Monday, no Ruddy over here on the weekly. The Monday after that, I should be here again. I don't really know what time I come home on that Monday, but I think I'll be here. Reaper is distracting Rainer in the main as a couple of Hellions will go for some drones in the natural. And this is already, again, a really good start for Clem. Clem is finding the stars that we often see him have against every other Zerg that he plays in this tournament. What is this, guys? Oh, oh, oh. That Reaper distracted Rainer, kept him busy. And the first two Hellions kill eight drones in the natural. That's, uh, that's around six too many. Well, I kind of fear the worst. 
Clem has switched up a l uh, things up a little bit. I didn't mention it yet, but I think you guys can also keep track of that on the production tab and the mini map. But it's a double CC, so not triple CC. It's just two bases for Clem. And he's going to show up with very quick cloak banshees. And Rainer does not pick up on this, but maybe he will. Clem, by the way, is supply block. I think he just was supply block. Now he was supply block again. Rainer does see this setup. I hope that tells him enough. Link count of Rainer is very low. These are the only links he really has. Rainer is now out of Zirkling, so he can drop evil chambers all he wants. But eventually, these Hellions will find what they're looking for. And don't forget that the Cloak Banshee is going to show up super early. Cloak Banshee has already shown up in the third. Is this just game over, guys? Is this just the end? As Clem is killing an absolutely redonkulous amount of drones. 15 more. Cloak Banshee, where is it? It's over here in the natural world. It's eight seconds away from having Cloak. Clem is obviously not going to lose it. No Overseers, no Spore Crawlers. I mean, this is it, right? Can we just say that it is all over? I think Rayna knows that it is all over. He may try to put on a show for you guys, but... No, you're not winning a game like this against Clem ever. 28 drones in 5 minutes and 20 seconds. What would Dana White say about that? That's fucking illegal. I know. What would Rayna say about that? This is number one bullshit. Rainer is not one. Domination, guys, of Clem. Clem does lose one of his Banshees, but Banshee number two has shown up in the natural. It is uh, ridiculous what's happening over here. No cancel on the spore, so that spore dies too. It is 35 drones falling in a six minute game. And Clem still has one of his Banshees. Switching things up a little, showing us that it doesn't always have to be Triple CC Hellion Banshee. Or triple CC Viking Liberator. Clem is also willing to switch things up a little bit every now and then and go for a two base opening with a quicker factory, a quicker starport. And then everything hits a little harder and a little quicker. Pain. Pure pain. <laughs> My man uh, Executor has posted the Masters Coliseum highlight video in the Discord. I do think it's very cool. I hope you guys want to check it out. Doesn't matter if you like Maru, Rainer, Hero, Max Fax, etc. They all have their own little segment with a couple of their highlight moments of that tournament. We covered that entire tourney, including every single qualifier. Took a lot of uh, time and effort of my Hungarian friend who made that video. His name is Aztex. He was very eager to do something and I said, all right, let's do that then. Worked on it together a little. I think it came out pretty well. It is very long. I think if you're looking for some cool plays of your favorite player, it's a nice video. I hope you guys want to check it out. Splatty Poe gets a race. Rainer has a couple of links, but this is obviously, uh, yeah, what do we say? It is sad. It is a very one-sided affair. Rainer is going to make a couple of links defensively, but a few links is not going to be enough to deal with all these Marines, these Widow Mines. This edition of the European Pro Tour Weekly will also belong to Liquid Clump. Just like 64 others in the past belong to him. Liquid Clam. And that is what it is, guys. Clam loses game one where he, was to an where he was off to an absolutely fantastic start. But he let go. He got surprised, blindsided by a Lorca counterattack. And things just kind of snowballed out of control. And he could never really get the game back in his hands. Tried to hang in there for a little while. But in the end, it was raining. It was just all over him. Denying multiple bases at once. Game 2, Equilibrium, obviously a real turning point in his Grand Finals. Rainer is off to a great start, 1-0 lead in a game where he, he was in trouble. That should give him wings. The Muda Ling Bay never really got going. Took a lot of damage from the Hellions. Took a lot of damage from the Widow Mines with his Mudas. The double drop in the main ended it. And after that, it really was all clam. Relatively long Monday. I think we had a couple of great games today. It was fun to see Rainer look fantastic and sharp in ZVP. Especially against Showtime and Max Packs. Players that gave him troubles in the past. Clem was too good in the Grand Finals. That's all we can really say. Clem was too good like he has been too good so many times in the past. This edition. Yes. As I said, 64 orders. Belongs to Clem. And that is going to do it for your Monday Night Entertainment. Bit of a sad ending to a pretty fun Monday. I feel like we had a good time. We saw some great StarCraft. Yeah, Grand Finals kind of it is what it is. Clem takes it 3-1. to one. That is, I guess, the only map that Clem dropped in this edition of the tourney. 2-0 over Mana. 2-0 over Reyna's younger brother as well, Baby Marine. So Clem just taking out the entire Romidi family today. Also defeated Jumi in the round of 16. And we have Rare from...
El Salvador, that's cool. It's not a flag I see very often, making it into the round of 32. Rainer had a strong showing up to the grand finals. The grand finals is, yeah, all claim up. It is what it is, and that will be all C wrote. I hope you guys had fun. I can show you guys my video very quickly, but it was already linked in the chat. And that is all I really got for you guys. I will not be here next Monday because we'll be busy. Uh, but I should be back two weeks from now. Let me just double check that before I make false promises. Let's take a look at my flight. Can I find my ticket? When do I come back? I fly home on... Uh, yeah, no, I arrive very early on Monday. So two weeks from now, I'll be here. Uh, next Monday, I will not be here. 